Hello, and uh, my name is Dr. Hugh Wagworth. I'm a functional medicine doctor. And today what we're going to be talking about is stomach acid and doing what we call the HCL challenge. So what we're going to be talking about is your stomach, which is obviously right here, and your stomach produces something called HCL, which stands for hydrochloric acid. And this is very, very, very critical that you have enough uh, hydrochloric acid. So what are some common signs and symptoms that you may have that would indicate that you possibly don't have uh, enough hydrochloric acid or producing enough hydrochloric acid? So these would be some common symptoms. Uh, if you regular bowel movements are, are every two to three times per day. So if you're getting something other than that, if you're getting one bowel movement a day, every other day, every third day, every fourth day, that is bad news. That's probably telling you that your stomach is not producing enough hydrochloric acid. If you have gas, if you have bloating, if you have constipation, if you have diarrhea, all these things are indications that you don't have enough hydrochloric acid. If you have irritable bowel disease, if you have Crohn's disease, all these are indications that you need to do this test to see if you have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach. And it's an easy test to actually do and figure out. So what we'll be talking about is this is your stomach, all right? And your stomach produces uh, HCL, okay, hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid. Nope, H, HCL, hydrochloric acid. Now, up in here, you can see here we have battery acid, which is has a pH of zero, and then down here we have uh, a pH of 14. So ammonia is what, what would be we would call to be alkaline, and up here we have gastric acid, which is one. So you want acid in your stomach. You need to have hydrochloric acid in your stomach. If you don't have hydrochloric acid in your stomach, none of your digestive system is going to work correctly. This is the first organ system we want to look at anytime I look at a patient when we come when we talk about functional medicine is at the stomach. Most people that have some kind of a chronic problem, some kind of autoimmune disease, thyroid condition, chronic fatigue, bloating, gas, diarrhea, fibromyalgia, have what we call leaky gut due to not, a, not enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So we actually want your hydrochloric acid in your stomach to be around 1 to 3.5 pH. So what you're looking at here, this is the pH scale, and just this just kind of gives you an idea of the acidity of different things. All right, so what exactly happens here? So your stomach produces what we call hydrochloric acid. And I like this drawing right here because you can see the stomach, the stomach right here, and then this blows up this little cells. So within your stomach lining, right, so this is the stomach lining right in here. All right, we have a whole bunch of different cells. This is in your stomach now. Now, these cells produce hydrochloric acid. You see this green one right here? It's called your parietal cells produce hydrochloric acid. So you can see right here where these little green ones are right here. These are the cells that produce hydrochloric acid in your body. Now, for some people, your body does not produce enough hydrochloric acid. These parietal cells are not producing enough hydrochloric acid. And there can, we can go over a billion reasons why. It uh, could be genetic, could be poor diet, could be uh, not enough minerals. I mean, it's really endless on why you're not producing enough hydrochloric acid. But these little cells in here, these little cells in your stomach right here, these little green ones right here, produce the hydrochloric acid. So if your body's not producing enough hydrochloric acid, your stomach's not producing enough hydrochloric acid, that is gonna affect your whole entire digestive system. So what we want is when we want your food, there's gonna be food in here, right? We want the food in here to have a lot of HCL in there, H HCL in there. Then what happens is when that food leaves the stomach and moves into your duodenum or part of your small intestine, this food must, must, be acidic. This is must, must, must. Now, a lot of people say, you know, they're on protein pump inhibitors, and I have a whole video on that. That decreases your acid. So what I mean by decreasing is a protein pump inhibitors make your stomach acid more alkaline. They drive it this way, which is very bad thing because you need hydrochloric acid to digest your proteins, your carbohydrates, and your fat. What the current research is showing is not that you don't have 
that, that you have too much hydrochloric acid or acid in your stomach, not enough. Because when you don't have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach, what happens? The food right in your stomach sits there and it sits there and it ferments and it literally rots and that causes fermentation. That causes the burning in your stomach. And then if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach, when that goes down into your small intestine or your duodenum there, that messes up other digestive enzymes, which we'll be talking about in a short bit. So generally, if you're on a high, if you're on like the purple pill, a GERD medication, it's because you do not have enough hydrochloric acid, not that you have too much. That's what the most current functional medicine research is showing. So what we want to do here is we want to make sure that you have enough hydrochloric acid in your body or in your stomach, and your stomach is producing enough hydrochloric acid. So what happens here is, this is a really critical uh, picture here. So we have your food right here, right? And if this is acidic, if we have enough hydrochloric acid, when that food gets in your small intestine or your duodenum, that will tell your small intestine or your duodenum to start producing what we call digestive enzymes. Now, this is real critical, digestive enzymes here. If your stomach is not producing enough hydrochloric acid when it gets into this area right in there, then that, because there's not enough hydrochloric acid, your small intestine here, your small intestine here does not produce the digestive enzymes, okay? So in your stomach, we have HCL. That's just a broad-based breakdown of food. Then we have all these different digestive enzymes here which break down those food particles into smaller things. So this is that digestive enzyme right here, protease. That splits proteins into smaller, smaller size. We have lipase, which splits, which splits fat into smaller size. Amylase, which splits, uh, which splits carbohydrates into smaller size. Now here's the thing with this. If this right here, if this, your food is not going into your small intestine there being acidic, Okay, if you do not have enough acid in your stomach, you do not produce digestive enzymes. All right, look down here, the buffers. The digestive enzymes reduces acidity. Okay, how your body works is when we're in this state right here, when you have the food in here, we want acid in here, and then as soon as it comes in your small intestine, then we want alkaline, okay? So in here, we want a pH of like one, right? And then as soon as it gets in here, this pH can be up to like six. But the whole key to this is if this acid or this food coming in your stomach is not one, your brain does not start producing digestive enzymes and then this food goes down your digestive system there and it will mess up your whole digestive system. So you can see this picture here. I like this picture here. This is the stomach right there. And you see the pancreas and your liver. And your liver produce digestive enzymes. You see all these different things in here? That's going in your small intestine. This is all the digestive enzymes to break down, right? The digestive enzymes are there to break down food into their smallest size possible. And if you do not have enough hydrochloric acid, these digestive enzymes are not turned on. So this is why people can get bloating after they eat. Okay, so let's say after like 30 minutes, you get bloated. That tells you that you don't have enough hydrochloric acid. The food gets in there and it, again, it just starts to ferment. It starts to rot because there's nothing there to break it down. So anytime we talk about any kind of chronic problem, you always need to look at your digestive system, your small intestine, which is 30 feet, 32 feet long. Medical research shows that 80 let me just write this down. Medical research shows that 80 to 90% of your immune system is in your small intestine. This part right in there. So we need to make sure that your digestive system is healthy and you're producing enough hydrochloric acid going in your small intestine or your duodenum. So there's a very simple test that we can do and it's called the HCL challenge. So what is this? This is the product that you take. It's called Spectrozyme Metagest, and this is what's in it. It's HCL, right, and pepsin. These are the things that your stomach produces. So what you do 
is you take one capsule with your first meal, right? So have a few bites and then take one capsule. Okay, if you get no change, then the next meal you take two capsules. And if there's no change, right, then the next meal you take three capsules. So what do I mean by, by change? So you can read these directions a little bit more specifically. But what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, a feeling of warmth, pressure in your stomach, irritation, or a heartburn ache. So what happens is, so coming back up to here, is you take three capsules with the next meal. If no change, then you take four capsules with the next meal. Now when I say next meal, these meals must have, they must contain proteins and fats. So you don't use the HCL, the HCL challenge on a very small meal. Okay, it says do not test on a small meal or one that consists only of fruit, a light salad, or a simple bowl of cereal. So what we need is we need fats uh, and proteins to do this um, challenge. So for example, if you eat eggs for breakfast, that's a protein source. Let's say for lunch you have some kind of... Uh, steak and some asparagus that's a protein now if you just have like a simple smoothie shake you don't really need to want to check the HCL challenge on that if you have oatmeal you, you don't want to check the HCL the challenge on that um, so it needs to have fat and it needs to have protein so here's what happens so the next uh, so if there's no change if you take four capsules with the meal you take a few bites you take four capsules so you take four capsules with, with the next meal then at that point if you get a heartburn sensation, pressure in your stomach, or a stomach ache, then the next meal you take three caps, okay? Then after that, each meal you continue to take three capsules. So what we're doing is we're going on a gradient scale. So we're going up each time until you get this heartburn feeling sensation. That means that you have now you have too much stomach acid or you have too much HCL in your stomach. So then what we want to do is we want to just go down one capsule to three capsules, and that would be your dosage. Like that would be your continual dosage, three meals, three caps with every meal. Now, here's the thing. You can take up to seven of these. So let's say you take seven capsules and you get no uh, pressure in your stomach, you get no heartburn. That just tells you that you're, you're producing exactly zero hydrochloric acid, like no hydrochloric acid. I've had some people take up to 12 of these and they have no heartburn sensation. What does it tell you? It just tells you that their stomach is not doing well and they're producing no hydrochloric acid. So what I've done is you just take up to seven if you have no heartburn sensation. So let's say you take two caps, okay? And so this would be your second meal. You take two caps and then you start getting some heartburn sensation. Then the next cap and then the next meal you take one. And the next meal after that, you take one. And the next meal after that, you take one. All right. So let's say here, let's say you get to, let's say you get to three caps. Okay. You get to three caps of this. When I say caps, I'm talking about capsules. All right. So you take three caps of this and then you start to get a heartburn. So what do you do? The next meal, you take two capsules and you take two capsules for every meal that has a protein and a fat source in it. So we want to start right away doing this and getting hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Now getting back to this picture right here. So what we can do is when we start to supplement here, all right, if we start to supplement with the HCL, um, H, so acid, I was going to spell acid, okay? Once we get this acidic with supplementation, with the product I just showed you, then this goes in your duodenum and your small intestine. Then what happens is your pancreas and your liver start to produce their digestive enzymes and start to break down your food into what smaller sizes. So what's happening, if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, there's these big proteins right here, big proteins getting in your small intestine, big fats getting in your small intestine, and big carbohydrates getting in your, in your small intestine. And that causes the bloating. That causes the gas. That causes, uh, that will cause irritable bowel disease. So, and it will also cause autoimmune and leaky gut. So start with the simple things first in functional medicine. The greatest doctor you have is inside your body. There's a reason why you're not healing. 
and 80 to 90 percent of your immune system is located in your small intestine so this is a really critical piece for people to do the uh, HCL challenge so if you have any any, any questions please uh, email me you have freedom to email me take care